This presentation is on submerged arc welding. It's a process overview for non-welders. Um, in the past, this presentation has been given to coworkers of mine who were mechanical, structural, or civil engineers that had to interact with welding people and welding inspection personnel. And for whatever reason, there always seems to be a huge disconnect between the people who design the welds and those who make the welds. In my opinion, a more majority of this disconnect is due to the lack of education on the subject of welding. And that's not the engineer's fault. I think a lot of it falls into the fault of the way our educational system is set up for engineers. And your average mechanical or civil engineer might get a couple of hours worth of class time discussing welding. It's just, okay, these are your four processes. Let the welders deal with it. Move on. And then it's on to some other subject. And then it happens that those engineers end up working out in the field and designing things that are welded or having to disposition welds that went bad. And then you have the unfortunate instance where you have to deal with welding engineers or welding foremen or welding superintendents. And this is where the disconnect happens. Hopefully this presentation um, will help uh, expand your knowledge on the base subject of welding and help with any future encounters that happen between welding people and engineers. So it's definitely not designed to turn you into a welder or a savant on the subject of welding engineering, but hopefully it'll give you some insight into the welding processes and maybe enhance your vocabulary in regards to welding. Just like to acknowledge where I acquired, pilfered a lot of material from um, the U.S. Army, U.S. Navy, uh, the NRC, Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Can Teach. Um, it's public domain educational and reference library on um, Can Do technology, the Canadian deuterium uranium reactors. Um, here's the here's a list of you know places I hit up for information because they know far these guys know far more about welding than I'll ever know but um, and the materials already written and it's in a open source or non copyrighted format because it's government technical manual so anyways I go through there and uh, have referenced a lot of their material and use it as a narrative for the slides so and then added my own take on it but they're pretty good at you know, putting together uh, manuals for, you know, talking about welding, subject to welding. So if if you want to, you know, chase this down further and, you know, look at some of these uh, references, there's a lot of good information in there that can be used for a lot of different uh, end uses. So anyways, just be cognizant that those uh, repositories of information are out there and they're public domain so make good use of your tax dollars. My name is Gary Pace. I'm a professional engineer and a certified weld inspector. Um, I work for Texas Metallum Welding Engineering which is me. Um, TexasWeldingEngineering.com is my website. There's an email address if you have any questions or want to contact me in regards to welding engineering or if you have welding questions give me a shout out I usually get back to you relatively quick submerged arc welding process is similar to the gas metal arc welding process except that the arc is struck under a blanket of granular flux hence the name submerged arc welding once again nothing to do with water the filler metal is a continuously fed wire electrode like gas metal arc welding or flux cord arc welding. However, higher deposition rates can be achieved in submerged arc welding by using larger diameter electrodes and higher currents or multiple heads. Since the process is almost fully mechanized, several variants of the process can be utilized such as multiple torches and narrow gap welding. Um, you can see in this picture the head, the wires going under there, you don't see an arc. You can see the wire going underneath the flux, which is somewhere between sand and kitty litter in a granular scale. Um, 
and you can see the vacuum scooping up the flux that comes off, the flux that isn't consumed in the welding process. From this slide you can see there are some similarities between gas metal arc welding and submerged arc welding. The major difference is the shielding. Submerged arc welding has a granular flux that provides a shielding. Gas metal arc welding has an externally supplied gas shield from compressed gas cylinders. Submerged arc welding utilizes a continuous solid wire consumable electrode with externally supplied granular flux shielding. The flux is granulated material which completely covers the wire arc in the weld pool, thus the name submerged arc welding. That portion of the granular flux closest to the molten weld pool melts, covers the weld puddle, and solidified weld deposit. It then solidifies and functions as an insulator to prevent the weld from cooling too rapidly. Normal, normally, a flux recovery system recirculates the unfused granular flux. There are several characteristics which make submerged arc welding a very attractive process. One is that there is no visible arc, so the welder does not need to wear dark welding lenses. Some would argue that covering the arc with flux also makes it very difficult to tell where the wire is going, but that's another argument for another day. Another advantage is the high quality of welds. Typically, submerged arc welds are very clean and have very good mechanical properties and generally have very few problems going through x-ray or getting ultrasounded. Um, this slide is giving you the, the written form of what we put on the other slides in the, the verbal form, I guess. So it just reinforces that, you know, the similar to gas metal arc welding, but instead of a f gas, it's a flux. Um, you know, this, is, this slide has the basic process overview. So nothing that I haven't said on a f the past couple of slides, but if you want to read it, here it is. As you can see here, we've got another um, sketch or diagram of the submerged arc welding process. Not a lot of really good live action photos of the submerged arc welding process. It's not really a fantastic spectator sport as far as the welding world goes. It's not like watching somebody do an open route 6G pipe weld or something cool like that. It's relatively um, benign. I don't know if that's the word, but it's not super exciting. Kind of like watching paint dry. Um, but it is an important process because it's got such high deposition rates and you can make such beautiful welds with it that'll x-ray. So basically the whole process boils down to an electrode wire, a chunk of barbed wire, and you're putting it under some sand or some kitty litter and you're running electricity through it. And I know somebody's probably going to flip out and tell me I'm wrong, but that's the basics of this process. The flux is more or less looks like floor dryer kitty litter and the wire is just a big spool of wire and uh, so the process principles submerged arc welding takes place beneath a flux covering covering without spark spatter smoke or flash the electrode and the weld pool are completely covered at all times during welding the flux makes possible these special operating conditions which distinguish submerged arc welding from other processes. Should be noted when cold, the flux does not conduct electricity. Therefore, the welder must establish a conductive path for starting the arc. This can be done by scratch starting where the electrode touches the base plate or by burying some steel wool in the flux at the starting point. In the molten state, the flux becomes highly conductive. Once the arc is started, the heat produced by the current causes the surrounding flux to become molten. This forms a conductive path which is kept molten by the continued flow of welding current. The buried arc of the flux is melted. The buried part of the flux is melted. The visible part remains unchanged in both appearance and properties and can be reused. All currents and polarities are used depending on the desired penetration, bead shape, 
and whatnot. Reverse polarity provides the best bead shape and penetration, while straight polarity gives higher deposition rates but less penetration. Alternating current provides penetration somewhere between the two and is preferred for multiple wire welding setups. The fuse flux is chipped off the weld and discarded. So, giving you a couple of different spins on this, things I've pilfered from, like I said, uh, mill spec handbooks on welding, army manuals, navy manuals, but that's the gist of the process. Again, tandem marks and deposition rates. Um, one of the most attractive characteristics of submerged arc welding is the deposition rate. Deposition rates up to eight to ten times of that of shielded metal arc welding can make uh, submerged arc welding one of the most productive welding processes available on the market. Um, these high deposition rates are because of high current densities. You're really throwing a lot of electricity in there to melt metal um, and it just does a fantastic job of efficiently depositing sound weld, weld metal in a weld joint. Um, to achieve even higher deposition rates though two or more electrodes can be utilized at the same time and fed into the same joint simultaneously. Um, multiple electrodes can be feeding into the same puddle or spaced far enough apart so that the weld puddle created by each electrode allows the wire to solidify independently. Um, the second method is often re referred to as tandem arc where you've got two separate arcs going and this enables multiple pass welding to happen in one pass. So you're putting down two passes at the same time, more or less, with one rotation of the part or one pass of the welding head that might have two separate arcs. This tandem principle is sometimes used when welding um, circumferential joints on large tanks in uh, horizontal position. The two welding arcs are maintained on opposite sides of the tank shell one trailing the other far enough to achieve the desired weld deposit configuration but close enough to benefit from the preheat of the leading arc. So there's all kinds of different setups and if you really if you're gonna get involved in making tanks or where you really need to get going on this there's companies out there um, that make welding machines that can can guide you through the process of choosing what's right for you. Here's a few pictures of the submerged arc welding process in use. As you can see it's uh, generally bigger stuff. You put it in a position or a roller. And once again it can be handheld but you can get um, deposition rates that are up to 10 times faster than shielded metal arc welding. So th this is a good way to really put down quality metal and get the stuff to x-ray. And once you get it set up and going, it should be a pretty easy ride. Although I had a guy I worked with years ago, an old welder, tell me, uh, somebody that doesn't know what they're doing on submerged arc welding can create enough uh, rework to keep 10 men busy for a week. So just something to keep in mind there, too. I thought that was kind of a profound statement on his part but I guess he'd been through it a few times with the submerged arc welding but once again yeah that take a look at these pictures and they just show you you know the wire the kitty litter f slash flux and uh, big positioners the electrodes used with submerged arc welding are generally bare rods or wire in coils the choice of electrode depends on the way the alloying elements are introduced into the weld. One method is to use a mild steel electrode with fluxes containing the alloy. Another method often used requires special alloy steel electrodes and neutral fluxes and includes low carbon steel, low carbon alloy steel, special alloy steels, high carbon steel, stainless steels, and non-ferrous alloys. The fluxes are granulated, fusible mineral materials of various compositions and particle sizes. 
The choice of flex depends on the welding procedure, joint configuration, and the composition of the base metal to be welded. The flux may include alloying elements. So you look at this and you say, oh, I just need a filler material and a flux and away we go. No, it, can, it gets way more complicated than that. It's not just getting some random generic wire off the shelf and a bag of flux, which looks like a 55-pound bag of kitty litter, and away you go to happy welding land. No, it's generally, uh, it's a complicated system as there's a large number of combinations of wire and flexes that can be made. So generally, if you figure out what materials you're going to be welding and then you break out a catalog or do a little online search and look for something that's compatible and then see if it, if that flux wire combination is what you need. But it's not just like I need 500 pounds of 7018 for shielded metal arc or I need some argon gas for and some ER70S6 for gas metal arc welding. Submerged arc welding is a whole different animal and it to me the 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 complicated portion is the wire and fluxes. So just something to think about if you ever have to go down that rabbit hole. Advantages of the submerged arc welding process. Submerged arc welding is an efficient process that can be used in nearly all ferrous alloys. Welds of very good quality are produced in a wide range of metals thicker than 1 16th of an inch. Carbon alloys or stainless steels up to half an inch thick are welded in one pass, while thicker materials require more passes. Weld metal deposition rates, arc travel speeds, and weld completion rates are better than those for other processes. There is no visible arc and no weld spatter, and the deep penetrating effects of the and the concentrated heat allows for narrow welding grooves. Thus, it takes far less filler metal to make a weld joint with submerged arc welding than one of the other welding processes. The unfused flux can be recovered and recycled when the welding is finished. Disadvantages. The basic limitation of submerged arc welding is that it can only be used in the flat position and for horizontal fillet welds. Welds can be made in the horizontal position, but since the granular flux needed to shield the weld metal must be in place in front of the electrode, complicated dams and supports may be required to contain the flux. The equipment used in this process can be handheld, but is usually mechanized, making it heavy and cumbersome and thereby limiting its use to fabrication shops. The fused flux must be removed by chipping and wire brushing. So there, it's not used for thin materials also. It's, like said, restricted to the flat position for grooves and flat and horizontal fillets. Slag removal is required and flux handling equipment. Generally hoppers and ovens to heat it and toting around 55 pound bags. But once you get the process set up and going, you can really lay down some metal. You can really have some extremely high deposition rates with this welding process. S summary for submerged arc welding process. You've got a lot of different wire flux combinations that you need to take into account before you um, head down a road and start welding something up, especially if it's a complicated alloy or you're desiring some specific material and metallurgical uh, properties from the weld metal. These are things that you need to take into consideration and maybe you need to qualify that wire flux combination. Um, the equipment is high cost and depending on what you're doing, maybe it's a really big chunk of iron, a couple of big chunks of iron you're welding together. The equipment is going to be expensive because it's, you're talking about you know, things to manipulate huge chunks of material, big pieces, big parts, big components that need to be manipulated and put into place to weld. Um, high deposition rates. There is no other process that can put down the metal like the submerged arc welding process. You can use it in narrow groove situations and really have some fantastic welds that will x-ray and just give you wonderful metallurgical and mechanical properties. Low cost consumables. Um, it's wire and flux. 
per pound. But uh, yeah, and it has nothing to do with underwater welding. I, I just got to keep beating that in there. I know that you guys know that, but I'm going to keep beating that drum just because I was asked that a couple of times before by people that didn't know anything. Oh, submerged arc welding. Anyways, that's the summary of this uh, process. So things to keep in mind. Hopefully this has been a somewhat productive uh, oh, review of this problem. When I give this presentation live, this is the point where I usually ask if anybody's got any questions, but seeing as how this is a presentation that's on the internet, you don't get that. So if you've got any questions, send me an email. If you have any need for a welding engineer, same contact information. My website is texasweldingengineering.com. My name is Gary Pace. Occasionally I get a question in regards to where I went to school or where I got my welding engineering degree. I went to Montana Tech in Butte, Montana. It's a four-year ABAT accredited welding engineering school, small class sizes, good um, faculty, good value for your money. If you're interested in welding engineering and you want to check out the state of Montana, uh, Montana Tech's a good place to visit. Go to school.